Welcome to NThought's 2021 Fandom Roundup. This is a casual general fandom discussion, and I'll be having with you about the biggest fandoms and fandom moments in 2021. If 2022 is the year of BTS ARMY with us being in the news way more than I am comfortable with for fandoms, cementing our place as an influence in the music industry and a global force for fandom, 2021 was the year of the Minecraft YouTuber stan. Now, I don't like this general term for Minecraft YouTuber fans, uh, really, because each Minecraft YouTuber has a different fandom uh, that interacts with other mcyt fandoms in different ways uh you can't look at them like a monolith at all just like you can't look at k-pop fandoms like a monolith or anime fandoms or any fandom of a general type of content like you can't look at book fandoms all the same just i i really want to ingrain that in people's heads you can't look at things the same just even though they like the same type of media just let's let's all cement that in our heads right now okay <laughs> the content creator dream was taken has the largest of these mcyt fandoms with other fandoms for content creators such as tommy in it rambo technoblade tubbo and wilbur suit adding into the larger mcyt fandoms group I think MCYT fans are an exciting sign for where fandom can go. Uh, Minecraft's 13th anniversary is coming up in 2022. Even if a fandom is relatively old or seems already cemented in its history, the fandom can always have revivals and newbie booms and resurrections. Passion has no timeline. I'm looking forward to seeing where MCYT fans go in the future as well. It's such a diverse fandom, and there's many people interested in fandom meta and history there as well. I think they just need the tools to start really delving into those things. There's still a relatively new fandom group, but as the fandom group ages, I have hope for their staying potential in the fandom subculture for the long term. Next up, Supernatural. SPN really benefited from the November 2020 SPN incident, or event, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, the season finale of the final season of Supernatural happened and there was a confirmation or not a confirmation you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna specify because I'm not too sure either but basically that happened and then it revived the fandom it was a very brilliant moment to see I, I witnessed it in real time it was great it's a uh, finale sort of revived this fandom movement from the early 2010s with Super Cool Lock and Tumblr I don't think I've s- ever seen so many old fans uh, who went on hiatus come back because of Supernatural because I remember around 2014, 2015, 2016, like 2014, 2016-ish, a lot of people went on hiatus after the initial um, Super Hulak like big like became like really big in like 2012 like 2013 and then people like went on hiatus or like just left fandom entirely and then a lot of people are now back because of supernatural so supernatural marked more than just an interest in the show itself it marked a reviving interest in the fandom subculture after years of fandoms being uh kind of lost in a way not lost more like not continuing fandom subculture from like the early 2000 the late 2000s from live journal and more creating a different type of culture. So after 2016, the original fandom subculture stemming from a live journal. I don't want to say the original, because fandom subculture fandom's always changing, but kind of like the ingrained like just idea of what fandom is with like zines or zines. I've seen people pronounce it zine and zine. I've seen both. Okay. I'm, I say zines because that's what I was taught, but um like the culture from like the early from like the 1990s with like zines like mailing lists and then like the early 2000s and into the late 2000s and like early 2000 the early 2010s and then like after 2016 like that kind of got like that lost not lost but more like a lot of people who were a part of that subculture stopped continuing it or passing it down And there was just a lot more people who were going into fandom without that kind of, like, ingrained knowledge and history of the culture. And uh, so the fandom... Sorry. Going back to the point. After 2016, original fandom subculture. Not really original, but you get the point. uh, Stemming from live journal and science fiction fandom sort of dissipated as all the people in those fandoms grew older and moved out of fandom spaces. Um, then from 2016 to 2020, fandom for content such as Voltron, My Hero Academia, and a lot of content from Asian countries took over. In 2016 too, Homestuck ended, which was weird because I thought it would never end, but it did. <laughs> and then the end of 2020 bring back some of the fandom culture from the late 2000s and bring back so many people who are ingrained in fandom and like that mentality and how it really works, uh, really allowed 2021 to shine as a year for fandom. 2020 2020 was a year for fandom yes but 2021 was where fandom has just like shown as like a force to 
like as a cultural force basically so many new fandoms have this thinking about interact internet interactions and being kind of like super pseudo celebrities in their fandom like they're not actually doing fandom things or like community events or stuff like that and it's eh, it, that's life you know and um when really fandom has always been a community thing so fandom's not about how many followers you have fandom's not about anything like that fandom's about loving one thing together and i feel feel as if we have lost that in the past couple of years but I feel now with the pandemic and a lot of people being home and having more free time we kind of we we have that again oh that really dates me oh I'm not that old but but I feel yeah and 2021 brought back this missing part of fandom fandoms have always fandoms just need different generations of people in the space we need to have people who are in their 60s 50s and even older to be here we need teens we need middle-aged people we need young adults we just need a lot of diversity we need people to be here from all types of walks of life to enrich the fandom and just make fandom what it's meant to be which is a community of just people loving something uh, fandoms need to be diverse, and with the COVID-19 pandemic, we've both had a blessing and a curse, where briefly we get that diversity back en masse because people have more free time now. Uh, 2021 felt right as a fandom year. Uh, SPN seemed to be the spark to bring back a lot of elements about fandom I really love, and even though I've never been in the fandom personally, I'm grateful for Supernatural. Okay, let's talk about the fandoms this year and some of, like some of the big fandoms. I'm basically taking these from the Tumblr Year in Review uh, 2021 list and a bunch of articles and other things and just general knowledge. So Critical Role, I feel like Critical Role is so big, but some people don't realize that. It's huge with older people in fandoms, such as uh, the beyond teenager crowd. So like middle, not middle age, but like late 20s people like really love critical role the second campaign for critical role actually ended in 2021 and the third campaign is currently airing and if you know nothing about dungeons and dragons you'll still thoroughly enjoy critical role the fandom for critical role doesn't dictate larger fan overall fandom subculture changes but it's a fun fandom i feel like if you have the opportunity you should be you should go into different fandoms and experience just their community and what they're interested in and how people discuss because it's truly magical seeing so many people so so passionate about things okay let's move on loki wandavision superman no way home the marvel fandoms group uh seeing marvel fandoms kind of revive themselves this past year fandom wise has been interesting marvel has always been big with general audiences but its presence and influence in the fandom subculture kind of declined after the original adventures because marvel became a general part of pop culture so in the fandom subculture specifically even though marvel is very big it did not have an influence in uh changing anything about fandom itself so fandom's been relatively the same the past decade or so except these past two years because it's on twitter but that is a whole other conversation <laughs> the fandom group has since regained its footing in the fandom subculture through what i think we have uh through what through both uh wandavision and loki i think we have those to thank for uh wandavision created a lot of theories i think fandom theory culture is criminally underrated it generates so much fan activity and discussion that if you look at the numbers before a theory begins forming and after a theory begins forming on things like google searches or theory youtuber subscriber um counts it'll blow your mind Loki also generated a lot of theories, but I think we have to acknowledge Tom Hiddleston's star power as well. He's a beloved fan favorite, and giving him his own series pulled back many people to Marvel after years of the universe disinteresting them. 2021 was the return of Marvel fandoms, especially because during 2020, there was no Marvel content that was released either. BTS ARMY is great! Woo! That's my fandom! Woo! That's my main fandom right now yay <laughs> oh we're iconic i talk about being an army every week on this channel i feel like i don't need to talk about in a general fandom roundup uh but for fandom roundup uh i think we can't talk about army with its general fandom presence because uh, wait i can't i can't talk about army uh with its general fandom presence because i am such a hardcore fan and i might conflate our impact uh fandom subculture wide 
I'm trying not to in this moment. I'm going to acknowledge as many things as I can. Personally, I saw armies uh, representing fandom subculture and helping the subculture break into mainstream culture in 2021. Uh, just a lot of articles, a lot of professional work. Um, we're a fandom who gets written about the most in articles, and we're the most visible fandom online. Even if other fandoms don't want us to, we're, we're representing fandom as a whole. Uh, that reminds me, we need to update all those fandom collages from 2014, because they don't have any K-pop or anime stuff on it. Um, this is a project for another day, or maybe I felt like it, and I'm making the collage in the background right now for fandoms, uh, whatever Future Crystal is doing. Uh, back to the point, though. VTS Army, great. A lot of professional work this year um, about Army, and I think that's super exciting. I think BTS Army, as like a whole, really represents fandom in its truest form because it's because BTS Army as a fandom is multi generational. So there's like people in BTS Army who's been in fandom since the 90s and the live journal days, and people who are now a BTS Army and they've only been in fandom for like a year or two. And I think that's so incredible and makes Army such a force to be reckoned with when it comes to representing fandom and truly showing the heart of fandom in a really good way. Just, I'm super excited. But yeah, I think I am making the collage in the background right now. I think I am. If I am, then, then tell me in the future. <laughs> all right, here are some fandom predictions for 2022. This is what I'm going to leave you all off with. The Netflix series Arcane will experience growth. Okay, that's my first prediction. I think it might experience growth the same way Voltron did. I'm not saying it's going to be like Voltron. Okay, I'm not saying it's not going to be Voltron. I'm saying the way it grows will be similar to how Voltron grew. Where the first year it is released, because Voltron was released in 2016, and then uh, Arcane is released in 2021... Um, the way it would be similar because the first year it's released has kind of a lag, and then the second year is when the fandom expands exponentially. So when Voltron was first released in 2016, it didn't. It was pretty popular in Tumblr, but it was not um, like explosively popular until 2017, and then it uh, it sustained that popularity throughout 2018, and then when it ended in 2019, I think most people know what happened. If you don't go read the fan lore page, but. <laughs> So, um, I think Arcane will, uh, experience the same thing, because Arcane was released in November 2021, and we don't truly see a lot of fandoms go through an ent entire fandom cycle with gaining new fans or losing fans until summer of the, of the year of, or the next year. Uh, this is because during summer, uh, school is out, so young fans who make up a majority of fandom activity can truly start affecting, uh, fandom changes. The changes uh there are outliers to this sort of fandom cycle though uh such as fandoms who rose during the COVID-19 pandemic mcyt which stands for minecraft youtubers i think i said that earlier but i hope hope everyone understands what i'm saying k-pop uh, genshin impact and the revival of av wait the revival of avatar the last airbender and the newer marvel fandoms are dictated by different fandom cycles because their cycle was not determined by the school year uh these fandoms are either very active uh so the school year doesn't affect them for example mcyt and k-pop and the school year has more impacted fandoms such as anime tv shows which are released periodically uh, for example my hero academia benefited from this cycle because it was released from april to june 2016 which hits the sweet spot for getting fans uh during that crucial summertime and the genshin impacts activity is determined by game events actually interesting a lot in interestingly enough um genshin impact is sort of a new fandom type where we're seeing how mobile gaming will affect fandom subculture and activity as we go forward in asian countries uh mobile gaming is much bigger is a much bigger deal than in america Although American Tumblr and Twitter dictate a lot of fandom culture, fandoms from Asian countries are multiple steps ahead in fan organization. And that brings me to my next point. K the K-pop stanification of Western music artists' fandoms. Uh, the K-pop fandom subculture is much more profitable and intense than the typical structure for musician fandoms, in America, at least. Uh, I think the American music industry is beginning to recognize this, and most importantly, wants this type of engagement in their fandoms. We've already seen the Minecraft YouTubers' fandoms adopt some parts of K-pop stan Twitter for their own fandom subcultures, uh, structures, activity, and activities, uh, or follow-for-follow accounts, fan bases, and using trending for their advantage. No one part of fandom is completely independent of other parts of fandom 
fandom. If we see something that is more efficient or effective, we just adapt it. That's how a lot of memes get spread, too, and a lot of other content. Fandoms just copy each other a lot, and that's perfectly fine. I think it's very, uh, it shows how interconnected our subculture really is. All right, that's this video. Please tell me in the comments about 2021 and fandoms for you, or give me your predictions for fandoms in 2022. Tell me all that jazz. Have a wonderful day, and as always, please remember to stay thoughtful. Cue the ad! Do you have nothing to read in 2022? Well, you should join in on the RM Book Challenge that's being hosted on Twitter for Armies. Uh, we'll work on reading books personally recommended and read by BTS leader RM. I'm not organizing this event, by the way, or um, in evolved with the admins for it, but if you want to come and read books, go ahead. I'm going to be reading the books all this year and taking part in discussions about them, and I'm really excited to do that this year, so if you would like to join in as well. And by the way, you don't have to join in immediately on January 1st. Uh, you can join in whenever you want to throughout the year, and you don't even have to take part in the discussions. You can just read the books. So basically, this is going to be a book, kind of a book club online where people can freely join in and discuss the books. Every month, there'll be a book read and an additional bonus book to be read uh there's a story graph uh, where people can check out and there's also a book club on the app fable that you can uh join and then discuss your thoughts and ideas with a fellow armies and if you're not an army you can i guess if like you're interested in like seeing conversations between armies and reading the book and talking about it with people who are armies and go ahead and join in and remember at the end of the day this challenge is meant to be encouraging take your own pace and learn to enjoy books at your own comfort happy reading so this is just an amazing uh, type of challenge for people to have for reading books 2022. And I hope that if you're interested, you can join it. All right. Have a wonderful day. And as always, please remember to stay thoughtful. Goodbye.